A reading from the third letter of St. John. Beloved, you are faithful in all you do for the brothers and sisters, especially for strangers. They have testified to your love before the church. Please help them in a way worthy of God to continue in their journey. For they have set out for the sake of the name and are accepting nothing from the pagans. Therefore, we ought to support such persons so that we may be co-workers in the truth. The word of the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Blessed, Blessed the is the man who fears, fears the Lord. Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed, Blessed the, the man, man who fears, fears the Lord. Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Blessed, be Blessed the, man the man who fears the Lord. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Blessed, Blessed the, man the man who fears the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling. But eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a marvelous gift the priesthood is. It takes... the form that the first reading indicates setting out for the sake of the name, the reading says, and being co-workers in the truth. The priest, in other words, is acting in the person of Christ, as our church describes it to us. Christ Jesus himself, who is alive, who is Lord, who is reigning over the universe, is still preaching his gospel, is still offering the saving truth to the world, is still serving the poor and the needy, opening the eyes of the blind, causing the lame to leap, raising the dead, forgiving sin, giving people his command of love, we're not just doing these things in memory of Jesus. We're not doing these things simply imitating Jesus. We're not just looking back at a far distant time and to a far distant place and trying to recreate the ministry of Jesus. It's none of that, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ is here, alive, just as alive as he was when he called those apostles and said, go forth and proclaim the kingdom of God. He's with us here in all his fullness. And he is the one proclaiming his gospel, 
reconciling sinners and bringing about the fullness of the kingdom of God. It's not looking back simply. There's part of that is we're looking back, of course, at his earthly ministry, do this in memory of me, and so forth. He will remind you of all that I taught you, he said, of the Holy Spirit. So there's a dimension, there's an element of looking back. Of course, we're living in time, we're living in history. But the Christ on whom we look back is just as much here now. And the priesthood is one part of that, not the whole thing. Because he's present in the whole church, Jesus says. He's in the Eucharist. He's present in his word. He's present where two, wherever two or three are gathered in his name. He's present by his spirit, which you have all received by your baptism and confirmation. So he's present in and among all of us. But there is a particular kind of presence in his chosen and ordained ministers of the gospel. And this is where the, the teaching of the Catholic faith is so marvelous about the priesthood because it says the priest is acting in the person of Christ when especially he administers those sacraments that bring the forgiveness of sin and what we are about to do here in the Eucharist that bring us his body and blood. Because the priest in the moment of confession says, I absolve you. The priest at the moment of the consecration says, this is my body. Let's just take those two moments to reflect on this. I absolve you from your sins. How in the world can any human being say that? A sin is an offense against God. Only God can, can forgive that. It's an offense against God. If somebody offends you, and then they want forgiveness, they can't get it from me. they got to get it from you. And yet what Jesus has done is as he has appointed priests and said, I am going to absolve that person's sins when they repent, but I'm going to do it through you. I'm gloriously reigning in heaven. I'm, not, I'm on earth, but I'm not walking around on earth in human form. I'm going to choose you, and I'm going to allow you to say, I absolve you from your sins. Because I will be absolving the sins. You, you will be acting in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. See, some of our brothers and sisters who follow the Lord Jesus and know like we do that he is the only savior, the only mediator between God and the human family, will think about this and will say, well, wait a minute, you're putting a human being in place of Christ or you're establishing some kind of extra or added mechanism of mediation with God or salvation. No, that's not it at all. There is no other way but Christ. What we are saying is that one and only Savior, that one and only mediator, that one and only channel of grace and salvation is operating in this particular way by choosing particular people through whom he will bring about that forgiveness. This is my body. I don't stand there in the Eucharist and say, this is Christ's body. I say, this is my body at that moment of the consecration. The priest is acting in the person of Christ. This should remind us, and Archbishop Fulton Sheen said this well when somebody was praising him for his preaching and said, oh, well, you are, you are very holy. And he said, well, don't think I'm holy because my preaching inspires you. Those are gifts given by God for the building up of the body of Christ. Those are gifts given to certain people so that other people will be inspired in their discipleship. But that doesn't mean that the person exercising those gifts is holy. The person exercising those gifts, and the priesthood itself is in this category, is holy only if he is obeying the Lord and is united with his will and is serving and loving him above all things, and is following the commandments, and is living in the Spirit. 
This, these are the things that make us holy. It has nothing to do with how good our preaching is or whether we are a priest or a bishop or a pope or anybody else. So the gift given in the priesthood is for the building up of the body of Christ. But we at the same time have the obligation ourselves to obey those, those commands and live out those graces. That's why the priest who absolves sins also has to go to confession himself. The priest who distributes the Eucharist must also be receiving it, and so on and so forth. The priest who preaches about virtue must be practicing virtue. And because Jesus Christ is life, the priest must be a proclaimer, defender, and servant of life. My vocation as a priest is not different from my vocation as a pro-life leader. It is all one vocation given to me specifically. And I've been given the grace to devote my entire ministry, every hour of the day, every day of the year, every action I undertake, every effort I expend for the unborn. Now we can say for life, life is, is a big concept. You know, life is, is, is the eternal life that we proclaim in Christ. Life is human life from conception to natural death. Life is, is to every issue is an issue of life. Otherwise, why is it an issue at all? So we're not talking here in the broad sense. I'm talking in a very specific sense about a mission to defend the unborn. The children in the womb, the most defenseless of all, I've been given the privilege to first of all have received the call to defend them as my full-time focus. And you know it happened at the same time as I felt the call to the priesthood. This was in my senior year of high school. This was in 1976. That's when I went to the third annual March for Life in Washington as a high school student. And I went to public schools, by the way, not, not Catholic or religious schools. And since then, this calling to priesthood and to pro-life have been intertwined inextricably, and it was after a few years in priesthood serving in a parish that I came to the conviction that I needed to do this full time. Well, the Lord has blessed, blessed that immensely as I complete 34 years of priesthood. This coming year, I complete 30 years of serving full time in national pro-life leadership. A priest is called to defend the unborn. Not all of us, or in fact, most of us are not called to do it full time, but we are called to do it with full hearts and voices because Christ is life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the bread of life. I have come that they may have life. Jesus defined his mission in terms of life. And if we are people likewise as Jesus did, who stand up for the most vulnerable, those on the outskirts of society, who go to the blind man and heal him, although the crowd is saying to him, shut up, who go to Zacchaeus, who's hiding up in the tree and says, come down, I'm going to eat at your house, who welcomes the children despite the effort of the apostles to, to shoo them away, who heals the lepers despite the societal wall that was put up between them and the rest of the people, who spoke to the Samaritan woman, although the Jews have nothing in common with Samaritans, who ate with tax collectors and sinners, although others shunned them, and in whom, as Paul says, there is no slave or free, Jew or Gentile, man or woman, so in Christ there is no born or unborn. We are all called by Almighty God, by His infinite love, into being and into salvation. As Christ is the one who goes to those most marginalized by society and victimized by false barriers that we place up against them, he is to be a proclaimer of the rights of the unborn. To show the love that we all have to have for them. 
And all of us are called to that very same thing. So thank you for the prayers and the blessings that you bring. And let's all take the words of this reading today as an inspiration to recommit ourselves. Be co-workers in the truth, the reading says. The truth that life is sacred. The truth that the unborn are our brothers and sisters. The truth that public officials are called to protect them. Yes, religion and politics mix. Yes, the priesthood and politics mix. We can't be neutral when it comes to fundamental moral imperatives. Co-workers in the truth that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and that we must proclaim his name to the ends of the earth. Co-workers in the truth of the fullness of the faith handed on from Christ and the apostles, co-workers in the truth of God's mercy and love. Let us work together for as long as God wants us to do so and until he comes again. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have heard God's word. Let us now intercede for his people throughout the world. For the church, that she may rejoice in many co-workers in the truth and may faithfully proclaim the gospel of Christ, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all priests, that they may embrace this gift, that they may serve the people well, and that at the same time they may seek holiness. Each day we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are discerning a call to the priesthood, that they may indeed listen attentively to the grace of God and find clarity about what he wants them to do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for priests who are doubting their vocation, that they may know that the God who once heard yes does not now want to hear no. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are in the womb, that these youngest and most defenseless brothers and sisters of ours may experience our love, our voice, and our protection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all in public office, including all who have been recently elected. Let us pray that they may follow the will and law of God and that those who embrace pro-abortion positions may indeed repent as quickly as possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's forgiveness upon those who have voted the wrong way in this election, voted to suppress the church, violate the gospel, and throw God's law out the window, that they may indeed experience deep repentance seek and receive the Lord's forgiveness and transform their ways, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the poor, the lonely, the afflicted, the persecuted, those who seek a better life for themselves and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, that the Lord may assist them. For all who have died, that the Lord may welcome them into the eternal banquet of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for this time of prayer and worship. Hear and answer these and all the prayers that we hold in our hearts today. We ask this with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my brothers and sisters. Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels in joyful celebration as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Friends, with gratitude for the gift of the priesthood and for all the gifts God gives us, let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles,